Pakistan is a gift that keeps on giving. Every time you open the book, the news about Pakistan or its Islamic leaders, one is guaranteed that stupidity and idiocy will come out pouring even when you least expect it. The latest is about, of course, who else? The, the Khalifa uh, of uh, the Islamic world, Imran Khan. This guy, after his fourth wife and his probably 50th girlfriend, has just discovered that when girls, young girls or young women wear mini skirts, they are inviting rape. Imagine this guy who uh, has kids distributed around the world, sons in England, mothers and daughters, every which way you look. And now he's with Casper the ghost and nobody can see his latest wife. He has the audacity to come and lecture the rest of the world on why not to wear the mini skirt. Just imagine the hypocrisy. And then there are all those wonderful people who sit in awe. It says, oh, Imran Khan has said this. Therefore, it must be correct. This, by the way, the same guy, when asked about Osama bin Laden being a terrorist, said, no, Imran, uh, Osama bin Laden is not a terrorist. And when his foreign minister is asked, well, is he, is Bin Laden a terrorist or not? He says, well, you know, there are terrorists and there are terrorists. How can I know who's a terrorist? No, he didn't say that. He said, oh, I better not touch on that subject. It's because you praise the very guy who is the inventor of terrorism. You take pride in the fact that your country has been the birthplace of not just Osama bin Laden and the Taliban and the Jaish this and Jaish that, but also the mind that created uh, uh, the 9-11 hijackers, Khalid Sheikh Muhammad, my goodness, Khalid Sheikh Muhammad, another Pakistani that we should all celebrate. These are the guys who lecture the rest of us on what is pious and what is not, and how should women dress up? I mean, Casper the ghost, you, you marry Casper the ghost, she walks around behind drapes of cloth, talks to genies who hide behind curtains. It's unbelievable what happens in that country. But mind you, this is a guy who says that he can't be sure if somebody is a terrorist or not. Oh, no, he actually believes bin Laden was not a terrorist. But that truck, the 20-year-old guy who drove over a Pakistani family in Canada, well, that certainly is a terrorist. Why? Because it's a white guy attacking a minority. If it's the other way around, I think our dear Khalifa will say, oh, that is permissible, permissible because that's jihad. And yes, it is. And people like me and millions of others who are Muslims, we know what the whole game is. It's just the white guilt of the left-wing liberal uh, establishment in the Western countries who just can't see through anything. You slap their face and they say, that was so warm and kind of you to slap my face. Could you slap my other cheek? No, it, it would be the other way around this way. Yeah. They are willing to take any crap that comes out from the words or actions of a jihadi because that makes them uh, diverse. That makes them pronounce judgment on a criminal case even when the defense has not yet come up with the answer. The prime minister of this country, if Justin Trudeau can say that this was an act of terrorist and let's lay some terrorism charges on that 20-year-old guy who went to 
uh, went through homeschooling in a Christian environment and killed a family. A horrible uh, attack that destroyed the three generations of the family. But then to come around and say, well, we can't be sure about Osama bin Laden, but we are dead sure about, you know, Nathaniel Wetman who killed the four Pakistanis. Sometimes you just want to hold your head in agony and pull the hair and say, when can we expect a certain degree of common sense and objectivity in how the Muslim community behaves? The same act done by someone else is an act of terror. And if you just change the skin color and the religion of the person, the act would be the same, but the terror would be gone. And then the entire community is so much in awe of everything. The, the adulation they are getting as victims of Islamophobia. Islamophobia. We are victims of Islamophobia. We came to Canada. We invaded India. We plundered Hindustan. Wait till 100 years, you'll find out what we plan to do to Canada and the United States or Western Europe. And yet, we are the ones who play with the victim card. I've talked to you about how 48 times a day, while praying five times a day, we curse the Jews as condemned and cursed by Allah and label Christians as being uh, people who have, are wayward and who deserve the wrath of Allah. We do all this and then we claim there's Islamophobia. Oh, for heaven's sake. No. We need to get down and understand that if we do not arrive to this century and understand the rules and shed hypocrisy that we will be acceptable in the family of nations. Until then, we have to ask the question, why is there Islamophobia everywhere where Muslims are a minority? Where they're a majority, there's nobody else left. Somalia, Pakistan, you know, so many other countries, Iran, where, by the way, you had a mass murderer get elected as the president of the country. Imagine that. The man responsible for the death of 4,000 people in cold blood in the 1980s is today sitting as the president of the Islamic Republic of Iran. And we are looking around saying, well, what's wrong with that? He just killed 4,000 people who were not good Muslims. And therefore, a whole generation of people escaped Iran and have today live in, in Canada. So we are unable as a community to rationalize and understand the wrong we do and the false claim we make of being victims of white oppression in the very land where the so-called white community has said, you know, send all the Syrians over here. We will take care of them. And they did. The Kurds are here. The Baloch are here. This is the place where Karima Baloch got refuge till she died under mysterious circumstances. But there should be a time where we should pause and reflect ourselves. If you can't look at our face in the mirror because what we see is pretty ugly, then we need to change our faces, our actions, our livelihood, so that the world also sees in our actions some good coming out. The last four, 500 years, this has not happened. All we've done is killed each other or killed others. We've taken over churches, made them into mosques. We just have to go to Turkey. You'll find out. You go to, go to Babri Masjid which got taken over for 500 years and, and only until recently. We were, claim, we were claiming that we were victims, whereas we built a mosque over a birthplace of the, uh, you know, in Ayodhya. 
need to take a deep breath and understand that, that the enemy of the Muslim is within the Muslim himself or herself. We do not need to go out on an exhibition to show how powerful we are and wear the Muslim Brotherhood flag on your head to prove we are here, what can you do to us? Daring people into having a conflict. If we behave and if we accept the rules and regulations of people that have allowed us to come here, certainly people will find the, in, within their goodwill and generosity to accept us as equal citizens. But if we come here and tell our children, don't behave like Canadians, or in India say, don't behave like Hindus, well, what are they expected to behave like? Plunderers? Invaders? No. The times of conflict where we could send armies and ruin entire civilizations is over. Otherwise, simply leave the places where we are a minority. There are plenty of Somalias and Pakistan and Iran waiting for us with open arms. And the day you start living in a Muslim majority society, I'm sure you will recognize that the problem is not those who feel an urge to express Islamophobia, but the problem is us in acting in a way that induces other people to simply stay away from us. Until next time, thank you very much. I'll talk to you again.